Tonight on CTV News, ECAM plans to lighten the traffic load on the Northern Motorway. The CTHB's financial well-being is looming and a local man smells for the first time after a life-changing operation. Broadcasting across Canterbury. From the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Kia ora, good evening, welcome to CTV News, now streaming live online at ctv.co.nz. It's a major headache for commuters, so ECAN has plans to decongest the Northern Motorway. But will the proposal for more bus routes be the answer? Chelsea Daniels has more. The Waimakariri Mayor welcomes more bus services amid discussions of adding 12 additional daily trips through the region. We certainly welcome uh, improvements of service in our district and um, in previous experience has shown that if you improve the frequency and the reliability of a service, you uh, get higher patronage and the more people who use their buses, the easier it is on the congestion on the on the at the moment. ECAN commissioners will decide tomorrow whether to introduce a new bus service from Rangiora through to the city and Christchurch airport. But Ayres still has his doubts. The question over some people's minds, including mine, is the, the routing of the Rangiora buses through the Silver Stream part of Tāpoi um, does mean that it's that particular service isn't that accessible to people in northern parts of Tāpoi. And, and for them to um, make get onto that, those services into Christchurch, it will involve changing buses um, probably in Belfast. And locals are concerned with the Rangiora route as well. The changes in, in the way the bus transfers from Rangiora through to Kaiapoi need some review because it might cut out some of the uh, northern end of the town as a collection point. Otherwise, we were fully in favour. The couple says they are excited about the proposal of new routes in their area. Certainly the link between this northern area where there are many more people living now, many more housing areas, um, increasing the bus service would be a, an advantage. We use the bus quite often. 300 submissions were received on the proposals, with Jim being one of them. I responded to the new bus route uh, in survey and put in my opinion uh, and encouragement and um, we already find that the link through to Hornby is uh, quite an advantage for us. Close to 11,000 Waimakariri residents travel daily along the Northern Motorway resulting in heavy congestion and the move to lighten the load of traffic has been made necessary due to the post-quake population boom in Waimakariri. The earthquake um, had a, a very a damaging effect on, on bus services, people stop using them and so it's taken a while to, um, to reorganise that. Four additional express trips each morning and afternoon on the Blue Line route have been recommended. Along with those, two additional trips each morning and afternoon on the 95 Waikuku and Pegasus to City route have been asked for. If the proposal is agreed upon tomorrow by ECAN, the region should see the routes early next year. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. The Canterbury District Health Board's financial well-being will come under scrutiny tomorrow. Chelsea Daniels explains. The Canterbury District Health Board will find out the extent of its financial situation when an independent review is revealed behind closed doors tomorrow. The board has forecasted a $16.3 million deficit this financial year and sits on a $5.9 million overspend in the year to date. The Ministry of Health directed an independent financial investigation into the financial and planning decisions made since June 2014. But one elected board member says the PricewaterhouseCoopers report is a waste of time and money. Oh, it'll be in the tens of thousands, um, so we don't have the exact number in front of us, but the one the council did went into the hundreds of thousands. So. I yeah, it is a bit pointless when you're already cash strapped. He says the shortfall in the budget is warranted, with the CDHB allocating more money towards mental health services in Canterbury, which he says has paid off. That extra work that uh, our DHB has put into mental health and pulled money from elsewhere and created the shortfall, which puts all this pressure on the staff, has meant that 
Canterbury uh, has a reduction in its um, in its suicide rate, yet the rest of the country's had an increase. So I would say that's money well spent, and out of all of this, um, that's a glass half full story. Kewen says there is a major disconnect with central government, especially when it comes to mental health funding in the region. Well, ultimately it's Wellington. See, Wellington haven't increased our mental health funding at all post-quake, and that to me is a travesty. You know, people in Wellington think that Canterbury's moved on, that it's, it's all right, you know, so on and so forth. They'll possibly even take the numbers to say that, oh, maybe you should reduce your amount of funding. Is how some uh, you know networks in Wellington might see this. That oh, you need even less money for mental health now because your suicide rate's down. All in all, Kewen says the shortfall in the board's budget is a positive. If every DHB had a shortfall of uh, less than one percent um, of their annual budget, yet we reduce and they all reduce the suicide rate, I would say that's a win. Ministry officials are remaining tight-lipped on how much the taxpayers will fork out for the report. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. Bar management's defending the actions of bouncers who rendered two men unconscious in the central city, saying the force used was necessary. A video recording shows two men arguing with bouncers outside the Strangers Lane Bar precinct in Litchfield Street on Saturday night. After several minutes, the exchange becomes more heated and a bouncer places one of the men in a headlock. When his friend intervenes, he's thrown to the ground, prompting groans from onlookers. Both men appear to lose consciousness and are put into the recovery position. Well, the Rugby World Cup is getting into full swing ahead of the weekend's quarterfinals. Four games over the space of two days will be highlighted, with the All Blacks taking on France at 8am on Sunday. Gordon Finlater went out to see if locals are feeling the World Cup fever. There will be no rest for the wicked this weekend as brave All Blacks fans set an early alarm for Sunday's game. Christchurch bars showing the match are expecting a big turnout. The last couple of weeks, uh, especially Saturday, Sunday morning games, we've had uh, 40 to 50 people in. Uh, we're expecting probably to double that this week, uh, especially in the big quarter final. And from here on in, we're expecting all, all black games to be chock a block. And it's the same story just down the road at another local. Quite large, um, especially for like the French, the New Zealand games, the key nation games. Uh, coming up to the quarterfinal. We're expecting quite a lot of people, so uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of hopeful partying going on, so um, no, it's looking forward to it. We've got a couple of our key locals, uh, a French, and uh, been here for every game and there's been a lot of banter going around. <laughs> the banter has also been flying around behind the bar, with one member of the kitchen staff confident about her team's chances. You never know if we're going to play well or badly and usually against New Zealand we end up like playing quite well so I hope like they're just going to beat the Kiwi. She's also found a connection to the 99 and 07 voodoo that she thinks is due again. Every eight years we beat New Zealand so we beat New Zealand in 2007 so it's the year. Some Kiwi fans are worried about the French themselves, with a string of conspiracies doing the rounds. I think we'll be fine as long as we get to wear our black jumpers. Yeah, because isn't yeah. there a coin toss over there? Like the, do you know, you know how last time I had to the wear the grey? Who wears the white jumpers? And I don't want to be wearing... The, it was grey last time, and that grey should never be repeated. Yeah. Like Those grey jumpers. Not good. It did look like pyjamas. Yeah. There's no, there's no staunchness no, in a, no, a grey... Grey mail. It's not. It's yeah. what you wear when you're doing... Uh -huh. You go to the warehouse and buy yeah. grey mail tracks that can it give up on life. So it's not... New Zealand manhood. No, it didn't. It wasn't good. Instantly. Steve Hansen saying that he's got a whole pile of tactics I've been keeping in check. That they're about to roll out into the quarterfinal. Now we're into the knockout stage. But the reality is, does he really? Or is he just trying to explain the fact that form's been a little bit off through the pool games? So with the French, maybe that's the same. We don't know what have they got coming at us. We'll have to wait and see. It might seem odd, but these fans even think the match could be decided by Dan Carter's reaction at anthem time. The more worried he looks, the better he kicks. So, he kicks yeah. so as long as he's Dan looking really worried looking when it, during the anthem, we're yeah. going to be OK. The boys looking to see yeah. how worried Dan is. And when he looked unworried in one of those games, he, he kicked terribly. Terribly. Yeah. terrible. Terrible. He looked and happy. That's, that's not good, eh? Really Meanwhile, others are more than confident that the ABs will smash the French and bury the memories of 2007. Got to be, it's got to be the All Blacks. It's going to be Milner Scudder to score a double. 
And what do you reckon? One of the Smiths, we'll pick up one. Carter will get the early penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll pick it up by 13 plus. Put your money on it. <laughs> There's sure to be a range of emotions felt by all leading up to Sunday before the masses rally together to cheer on the men in black. Don't worry if you can't get the game at home, with somewhere near you sure to be putting on the game. Oh, we could come down here, can we? Yeah, we'll probably be here. We'll be here. We'll be here. <laughs> it's Wednesday and we're here, it's Sunday we'll be here. Gordon Findlater, CTV News. We're still to come here on CTV News, a gun that wins a top award. Welcome back. A woman who risked her son's life in a dangerous driving incident has lost her license for six months. The Christchurch mum was caught by police while driving on Six Mill Road, which is part of an 80 kilometre zone. Her son was sitting in the back seat at the time on top of a bed with the door wide open and no seatbelt on. The woman says the door was open because she was taking the bed to the dump and it was too wide to fit in the car properly. The woman was also fined $300. Well, it's been his passion for 30 years. A Redwood man has just received another gold award for his garden, and he's not giving up on it yet. It's considered one of the best gardens in Christchurch, a pop of colour everywhere you look. You just invent things that, you know, work for you and do it because everyone's garden is different. He's been entering garden competitions for over 30 years, a hobby he took up at a young age. My mum and my dad used to say I was always playing in the dirt, motocross, mountain bike racing and uh, gardening. And he's taught himself. Every inch of his property is covered with plants, 5,000 in fact, spending a couple of hours a day to keep the garden up to scratch. Oh, I find it very therapeutic and um, it's nice seeing what you get for your time. Just recently, Peter entered the Canterbury Horticultural Society Awards, taking out gold in the medium residential section category. He's still continuing to compete and is encouraging others to grow the hobby. A lot of the people that I've competed against have passed away now and, you know, and people don't seem to be into gardening as much as they used to be in the old days. All the plants come from local florists and he's got some tips to make your garden perfect. I use nitrophosca and blood and bone and do that and I re-soil twice a year but you know everyone to their own. Peter's now already planning his next change. What I do is take photos of the garden and then I know what I'm going to plant next time and but you know sometimes you can't get what you want but at Oderings I'm allowed to go out the back and you know you get, you've got to get the pick of the crop. Although many may say they don't have time to turn their garden into something like this Peter says. Gardening's only work when you didn't do any yesterday. If you do it slowly but surely, it's OK. And with a whopping 250 awards under his belt, he's not stopping anytime soon. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Get ready to practice a very important safety message tomorrow, along with over 100,000 Cantabrians who have already signed up for this year's shakeout. Tanya Green reports. It's on. It's happening. It's an earthquake drill. This Thursday, all New Zealanders get the opportunity to refresh their memories on one of our most important safety messages. Drop, cover and hold. Shakeout is an international earthquake drill program that teaches those in earthquake-prone countries how to keep safe when an earthquake hits. It's an opportunity for people to practice drop, cover, hold, which is the right action to take in an earthquake. And it's happening on the 15th of October at 9.15am. The annual drill is held all over the world, and New Zealand has taken part since 2012. Alicia Palmer says it's so important to keep this safety measure in people's minds. It just helps people to, to, to kick into that mode when, when there is an earthquake and to know drop, cover and hold. Um, so yeah, that, that's an important campaign because it just keeps it front of mind for people and helps them to remember what to do. And locals agree that a drill like this is a great opportunity to practice. It could be the difference between life or death. Uh, the more times you do drills, the more, more people's prepared and you know it may save lives because anything can happen at any time and we should always be prepared. It may seem old but experts agree that the drop cover hold action is still the most effective safety strategy to take during an earthquake. 
Research from a number of different countries around the world has confirmed that drop cover hold is still the right action for us to take um, and statistically it shows that people are safest when they do drop cover hold. And it's hoped a record number of registrations will take part here this year. We're hoping to get 1.5 million people across the country. Um, previously we had over a million people register in 2012, so we're really getting close now. We've got 1.1 million people, so we're hoping to make that target by the 15th. At the same time, people are being encouraged to check and update their emergency plans. It's really an opportunity as well for people to check their emergency survival items. It's a bit of a prompt for people to start thinking about their preparedness for their families and workplaces. To register for the shakeout, head to shakeout.govt.nz and drop cover hold wherever you are on Thursday morning. Tanya Green, CTV News. Here's Andrew King with your weekend, oh not your weekend sport at all, your neighbourhood news. Rangiruru Girls School performance, Breaking News, has won big at the Norfolk Islands Theatre Festival. The performance put on by the students won both Best Young Production and also was runner-up in the Best Overall Production categories. Director Robert Gilbert was named Best Director for the sixth time at the festival. The play was written by Angie Farrow, an award-winning New Zealand playwright. Two motorists will be spoken to by police after a member of the public reported them racing in Waltham this morning. The cars were seen speeding along Stephen Street in heavy traffic at 8am. Shift Commander of Police Communications, Kelly Larson, said street racing poses a road hazard to other motorists and pedestrians. It is unacceptable any time of the day and they will be speaking with the drivers concerned. Two Canterbury student teachers were presented with scholarships from the Ministry of Education yesterday. Kashmir High School's Sione Arali and Rangiora's High School Christopher Horton were among 30 Māori and Pacifica teaching students to receive coupe scholarships. The scholarships aim to celebrate and support the country's Māori and Pacifica teaching students. More growth and different housing options are on the wish list for residents of several Salwan towns. The District Council received 53 submissions from residents on the area plans for the Ellesmere and Malvern wards. The plans will provide a 15-year framework for growth and development. Resident suggestions included providing more medium density housing in Darfield, encouraging growth in Southbridge and Doylston, and improving cycling and walking options in Leeston. Rebuild workers may soon have relief from fines and time-restricted parking. The Fendalton Waimari Community Board has asked the City Council to trial special permits after reports of contractors working in the Holmwood area being forced to park in time-restricted areas and getting fined. The City Council will tomorrow consider whether to trial the use of contractor parking permits. Holmwood Road resident Dr Stuart Gowan came up with a scheme partially modelling it on a similar system in the United Kingdom. City Councillor Jamie Goff said if they work in his ward, he could not see any reason why they couldn't be available citywide. From the newsroom, I'm Andrew King. Thanks for that, Andrew. We're still to come here on CTV News, your region's weather forecast. Welcome back. Here's something a little different for you now. Not being able to smell due to a blocked nose can be frustrating, but imagine it lasting for nearly all your life. One local man has just undergone surgery to fix his sinus problem, but now he's able to smell for the first time. It's something many people take for granted. Oh, I, I smell the air, which is really, that sounds really strange, but it's, it's kind of like, a, it, it's just something I've never experienced before, and it's, uh, it's really cool to be able to not use my mouth to breathe, so... It's, it's just different, yeah. This 18-year-old has been suffering from a serious sinus problem, being an issue for him for over a decade and a half. When I was young, I used to have uh, quite bad hay fever and get quite bad headaches and, and things like that. And we were kind of we couldn't really ever diagnose the problem until I, I got, got a bit bigger and then I couldn't uh, I got to got to school and I couldn't couldn't smell properly. When he hit high school, he received minor surgery back in 2011. It kind of broadens the the, the airways and gives the sinuses more of a chance. 
But now, after a one-hour operation last month and two weeks' recovery, he's been discovering a range of different smells for the first time. I've never known any different, so it's, um, it, it's difficult, but it's not difficult at the same time. It makes it a lot easier to, uh, to sleep. I can have a lot more uh, restful sleep and also a lot less headaches and, uh, and hay fever and uh, those kind of symptoms, which is, which is really, really good. So we thought we'd put his new nose job to the test. What could you smell just as we walk in? Um, first one's probably coffee. coffee and kind of a marshmallowy smell. My favourite smell at the moment is probably caramel. Just like a really, really sweet smell. I just definitely didn't expect it when I compared it to the taste. Um, maybe a, a more surprising one for me was sugar. Uh, obviously it tastes very sweet but it's got little or no smell which I, I found really interesting. What can you smell now? Just a lot of pizza and those really nice toppings that you always want on your pizza. You're making me really hungry now. Yeah, I'm hungry as well. <laughs> and then there's those unpleasant smells. Oh, I, I live in Redcliffe, so I, I drive past the estuary every day and I always used to have my window down just driving. Uh, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but for now, he's got some work to do. It's kind of like, um, oh, I've missed out, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's cool, I'm just trying to make up all the ground. Fraser still needs to go in and receive checkups for the next six months. But who knows? What's next for you now? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've got no idea. Just carry on with life? Just uh, quit my job and find some sort of sniffing job. <laughs> Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Very good. Well, now here's your region's weather forecast. Canterbury. Well, today light winds and northeasterly winds for places along the coast. We also saw lovely sunny skies. Today's highs first up. Tamaru, you're actually on 17 degrees today, and Twizel, you took out 18. Central Canterbury, Christchurch, your high for the day on 15 there, just one off the expected. And 16 was the high for Akaroa, Leeston, Darfield, Ashburton, and Methven. A few updated highs there. Kai Koura, updated your high as well. You took out 14 today. A little bit warmer though for Rangiora on 16 and 18 there for Hannah Springs and Colburn. Heading over to the Alpine region, 13 degrees for you, Lake Tikapo and Mount Cook. Now tomorrow we're expecting nice sunshine again and light winds with few north easterlies coming through in the afternoon. 18 for your high Timaru and 5 for your overnight low. Ashburton, you can also expect those fresh northerlies a bit later on. 16 degrees for your high there, cloudy skies but lots of sunshine. Christchurch, beautiful day for your third Thursday, 16 degrees for your high and north easterly winds freshening up the afternoon, 6 for that overnight low. Kai Kaura, you can expect lots of blue skies and sunshine, northerly winds for you but they'll be fairly light, 18 for your high there. The rest of the Canterbury region, a very similar picture for you guys, sunshine, cloudy periods here and there and north easterly winds for Tamuka, Children and Waimate. Central Canterbury, a few north easterlies breezing in for Akaroa and Leicester, northerlies for you, Methven and your high, 18 degrees, Darfield 20 degrees for you and lovely blue skies. Now heading north, it's north, north, heading north we're seeing northerly winds for Cheviot, north easterlies for you, Rangiora and 19 degrees for everyone here. Over to the Alpine region, sunshine here and a lovely dry day with light winds, 18 degrees is your high Arthur's Pass. Looking ahead Friday, sunshine here, look at that, 24 degrees is the high for Christchurch and 23 for Ashburton and Timaru, so a bit of a hot day in still with those northwesterly and northerly winds. On Saturday, still lovely and fine in the morning, however we are expecting a southwesterly change in the afternoon, bringing low cloud and possibly some showers in the evening for Christchurch and Kaikoura. Looking ahead on Friday, those northwesterly winds and temperatures really quite nice and warm with that beautiful sunshine coming through. On Saturday, sunshine and a mainly fine day as well, however we are seeing that southwesterly change for most places. North Northwesterlies in the morning though, particularly for inland, could be quite blustery and then that flip in the afternoon with those southwesterlies coming through and showers for some. Over the next few days though, Friday looking beautiful and hot, temperatures between the 21 and 24 degree mark. So you might only need one layer of clothing for that day. And that's your update for Wednesday. Thanks for that, Mercy, and that's CTV News for Wednesday. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jeremy McCulloch. Have a great evening. 
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.